Introduction From childhood, Srila Prabhupada worshipped Lord Krishna, understanding him to be the supreme personality of Godhead, the source of all existence, and beginning at age 22, after his first meeting with his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, uh, Srila Prabhupada became more and more active in spreading the teachings of Lord Krishna. In Srila Prabhupada Leela Amrit Volume 1, we see Srila Prabhupada struggling alone to publish Back to Godhead magazine, personally typing, editing, visiting the printer and then distributing the copies on the streets of New Delhi. Working alone in Jhansi, India, Prabhupada gathered a few part-time followers to create the League of Devotees, an early uh, attempt to enact his vision of introducing people from all nations, races and levels of society to Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Srila Prabhupada was still alone as he arrived in America in 1965, but he was filled with faith in Krishna and determination to establish Krishna consciousness in the West and thus fulfill the desire of his spiritual master and the prediction of the scriptures and previous saints. Young men and women on New York's lower east side joined, attracted not so much to Vedic culture as to Swamiji and his chanting of Hare Krishna. Thus beginning from a small storefront, Srila Prabhupada introduced the Hare Krishna movement to America. We follow Srila Prabhupada to San Francisco's Haight Ashbury during the hippie heyday of 1967 as he establishes his Krishna consciousness movement there, just as he had done in New York City. Then in May of 67, he appeared to suffer a heart attack and retired to India to recuperate. It became even clearer that the Krishna consciousness movement, its life and its growth, depended entirely upon him. Although a few dozen sincere workers were dedicated to his service, they felt helpless and incompetent to do any missionary work or even to maintain their own spiritual woes to abstain from illicit sex, meat-eating, intoxication and gambling, unless he were personally present to lead them. In December 1967, Srila Prabhupada returned to America and his young spiritual family. As Srila Prabhupada would comment several years later, his movement did not really begin until this return to America in December 1967. His time was limited, he knew. The heart attack had proven that. Now, in whatever time was left, he had to accomplish his mission. And as his international, international society for Krishna consciousness began to grow, it gradually spread beyond its simple and sometimes humorous beginnings to become a spiritual institution considered noteworthy even among world regions. In the present volume, we follow Srila Prabhupada through the years of his greatest active participation in ISKCON, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, as its sole leader. In 1968, Srila Prabhupada has approximately 50 disciples and six ISKCON centers. Although his followers have increased their numbers, most of, them, most of them are no more than sincere neophytes. Prabhupada is personally available to each of his disciples and he continues to manage and maintain each his center. Then in July of 1970, Srila Prabhupada forms his governing body commission and begins to turn over his cons management to his board of GBC secretaries. Yet we find Prabhupada still actively guiding the activities of his society, expanded by 1971 to 600 disciples and 65 centers. Although the teachings of Krishna consciousness have existed since time immemorial within in India's Sanskrit Vedic literature and are the origin and incense of all religious expression, until Srila Prabhupada began his preaching, Krishna consciousness in its original purity had never been widely spread. In the most popular and basic Vedic text, Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna teaches that he is the supreme personality of Godhead and that real religion, real knowledge and real endeavor can be understood only when one dedicates his life to the loving service of the Lord. Only full surrender to the supreme can bring one freedom 
from the laws of karma and the cycle of repeated birth and death shrila prabhupad was convinced that devotional service to lord krishna is life's goal and that to engage others in devotional service is the highest welfare activity and those and these convictions drove him in his traveling and preaching on behalf of his spiritual master and krishna shrila prabhupad's success in spreading krishna consciousness was due to his being directly empowered by the supreme personality of godhead chaitanya charita amrit states kali kaler dharm krishna naam sankirtan krishna shakti vina nahi tara parivartana the fundamental religious systems in the age of kali is the chanting of the holy name of krishna unless empowered by krishna one cannot propagate the sankirtan movement yet although shrila prabhupad was empowered his life story is not one in which success comes nearly and automatically everything being miraculously enacted by god rather shrila prabhupad's story is one of constant attempts on behalf of his spiritual master successes come but one uh, but only after great endeavor and faith prabhupad encountered difficulties in trying to spread love of god in a godless world he sometimes met opposition from governments the media the and religionists including those in india and even within his own society he met difficulties caused when his neophyte disciples fell to the allurements of the material world yet through all difficulties shrila prabhupad preserved with the sublime tolerance kindness and unflinching determination of a pure devotee of lord krishna by material standards it is extraordinary that a person of shrila prabhupad's age could constantly travel confront problem and opposition and simultaneously pro- produce volume after volume of translated vedic literatures but material vision cannot comprehend shrila prabhupad's activities he was truly a mahatma as described by krishna in bhagavad gita the mahatmas are always working under the direction of my internal energy in spreading krishna consciousness shrila prabhupad was far from merely a religious zealot trying to increase a sect his writing traveling and preaching were done in pure devotion to lord krishna and were therefore transcendental it was krishna himself shrila prabhupad saw who was bringing the results lord chaitanya has stated prithvite acche yata nagaradi gram sarvatra prachar haibe mora naam in every town and village the chanting of my name will be heard these words directly spoken by lord chaitanya are certainly true the lord's prediction must come to pass many gaudiya vaishnavas however even as recently as the disciples of bhakti siddhant saraswati considered the lord's prediction problematic the name of lord chaitanya in every town and village should this be taken allegorically certainly the americans the europeans the africans the polynesians the mongolians the uncultured malichas outside of india could never become vaishnavas thus lord chaitanya's words had seemed an enigmatic topic for speculation shrila prabhupad however was under orders from his spiritual master shrila bhakti vidya bhakti siddhant saraswati to preach krishna consciousness beyond india and alone in 1965 he took the great step and left india crossed the atlantic and began the international society for krishna consciousness in new york city although some of prabhupad's god brothers had gone to england some 30 years before they had failed to establish anything and had even concluded that to give krishna consciousness to the western people was not possible but shrila prabhupad fulfilling lord chaitanya's prediction traveled and employed his disciples in traveling to open centers in new york city san francisco los angeles boston montreal buffalo seattle he also sent his disciples abroad to london and other countries and they succeeded where prabhupad's god brothers had failed at the present uh, as the present volume explains 
Srila Prabhupada traveled not only to enlist new devotees and establish Krishna consciousness in new places around the world, but also to maintain what he had already begun. Had he not continued to travel to each temple, instructing his disciples, observing their progress, correcting their mistakes, raising the standards of their Krishna consciousness, the devotees would not have been able to continue. Repeatedly, Prabhupada had to go around the world. Srila Prabhupada, by his faith in Krishna, by his selfless dedication to the order of his spiritual master and by the blessings of Lord Chaitanya, did what no one else could have done. As Chaitanya Charitamrit states, Krishna Shakti Veena Nahi Tara Parivartana. Only one empowered by Lord Krishna can actually spread the chanting of Hare Krishna around the world. This volume is an account of years of struggle and ultimate fulfillment in Srila Prabhupada's life and I invite the reader to relish them. Here is the rags to riches story of one who started alone with nothing but whose movement, writing and personal life created an astounding and permanent impression on the world. By following Srila Prabhupada through these times, we gain an understanding of his exalted and humble life. I am unable to describe Srila Prabhupada fully. I have therefore composed an invocation praying that I be permitted to tell this story purely from the transcendental viewpoint. Otherwise, it would be ruined and incomprehensible. When properly told, the life of the pure devotee brings the greatest joy and benefits to the hearers. Invocation According to Krishnadas Kaviraj, an invocation involves offering obeisances, defining the objective and bestowing benedictions. I offer my respectful obeisances to my eternal spiritual master, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, whose service is my life and soul. It is for His pleasure that I offer Srila Prabhupada Leela Amrit as an act of devotional service. He has blessed the entire world with Krishna consciousness and he is therefore the best friend of all people and all living entities. He is the most powerful Acharya, delivering pure love of God, and he is delivering the message of Lord Chaitanya strictly in disciplic succession. No one else has ever spread Krishna consciousness as widely as he. I am praying that he will allow me to surmount the difficulties involved in presenting his biography and that he will be pleased with the results. I am convinced that by his good wishes, this work can be successful and that if he is not pleased, I am powerless to write anything of merit. By offering obeisances to my spiritual master, I am offering respects to all other Acharyas in the disciplic succession, to Srila Prabhupada's Guru, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, to his Guru and so on, to the six Goswamis, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Krishna himself. Only by the grace of Srila Prabhupada can I bow down in the temple, prostrate at the lotus feet of God Nitai, Krishna Balram and Radha Sham Sundar and have access to their mercy. One objective of Srila Prabhupada Lila Amrit is to present the life and teachings of Srila Prabhupada in the trans transcendental perspective, never portraying Srila Prabhupada as an ordinary man, subject to the modes of nature. Srila Prabhupada was a divinely empowered pure devotee. He was sent to this world by the Supreme Lord just to uh, spread the Krishna consciousness movement to people of all nations, races, classes and creeds and thus to offer everyone the opportunity to become a pure devotee and go back to Godhead. Another objective of this work is to attract the leaders and influential members of society to appreciate and love Srila Prabhupada. This biography must be honest, factual and correct in transcendental knowledge and it must captivate and please the reader. Srila Prabhupada Leela Amrit must enlighten and please and also move the reader to inquire into the writings of Srila Prabhupada. My ultimate objective is that the reader be further moved to take up service to his divine grace Srila Prabhupada. Although it is appropriate while writing an invocation to offer a benediction to the reader, I am fallen and cannot offer any benedictions. 
Yet I can confidently assure my readers that by reading the life and teachings of Srila Prabhupada, they will gain quick access to the mercy of Krishna because it is only by the mercy of a great devotee that anyone gets the mercy of Krishna. By reading Srila Prabhupada Leela Amrit, those who associated with and served Srila Prabhupada will refresh their remembrance of him and thus derive ecstasy and re rededication to his service. Those who never knew Srila Prabhupada will also be blessed because according to the Vedic literatures, even a moment's association with a pure devotee can make one's life perfect. To read Srila Prabhupada Leela Amrit is to associate with Srila Prabhupada through the transcendental process of hearing. Therefore, although I myself cannot award any benediction to my readers, this work can do so. So it attracts everyone to Srila Prabhupada. Thus having made the invocation to this work, offering obeisances, describing my objectives and offering benedictions, I remain fallen and dumb, begging at the lotus feet of my Guru Maharaj and waiting for his mercy, which alone can allow this poor writer and poor devotee to speak well. My dear Srila Prabhupada, my dear Lord Krishna, if you think I can be trusted to write correctly, then please allow me to do so. There is a great need for this transcendental literature as the human beings of Kali Yuga are in a deplorable state of spiritual blindness with no knowledge of the relief to be gained by service to the pure devotee. The devotees of the Lord and the many sincere followers of Srila Prabhupada are eagerly receiving this work. They want to hear more and more of Srila Prabhupada's activities and instructions and they want to see them presented expertly so that others may also become attracted to join us in loving, dedicated service to Guru and Gauranga. My dear Srila Prabhupada, I know I have to work hard to produce this literature and I promise to do so. But my efforts will be only a spinning of con concocted empty words unless you become present in these words and bring them to life with transcendental potency. Satsav Roop Das Goswami